Hello, soaring enthusiasts. I'm Armin Charbonneau, and uh, it's a uh, rainy, cold uh, day here in Colorado. So I thought I would put together a uh, little slideshow on uh, the skew T. And I know when uh, a lot of people hear skew T, they kind of cringe and not really know what it is. Think it looks a little hard. You got lines going every which way. Uh, yeah, it's scary. And uh, so what I want to do is a very uh, basic on the skew T so that you can get over the hurdle of, of what it is and how to read it and, and really what it's saying um, without having to go into a lot of science and math. So the skew T is a very powerful tool that's used for weather forecasting and scientific research. Uh, it, it's a great thing. Uh, it even helps the soaring pilots, but we don't need to use all the features. We don't need to know all the things that it, it tells us that, that, that can be uh, deemed from it, that can be calculated from it, that can be read from it. There's only certain things we want to know. We want to know, is there going to be lift today? How high is it going to be? How long is it going to last? Um, and so we're going to, ref th this uh, little seminar is going to be uh, restricted just to those things uh, that really matter to the, uh, to the soaring pilot. Um, there are some excellent videos and other materials available. Uh, if you want to go more in depth into the skew into, into skew tees and what they mean and all that, uh, but uh, like I say, this is going to be uh, uh, kept just for the uh, glider pilots and uh, more of the beginning glider pilots. So uh, skew t for glider pilots, and we're going to be taking the mystery. We're going to be trying to take the mystery out of reading a, a skew t. Um, so let's dig into it here a little bit. Um, first of all, it's really called a log P skew T. And that makes it sound even worse, right? So what does log P mean? Well, P is for pressure. And well, it, it, at any rate, you look at this and it's just a scary thing. Um, there's lines going every which way. There's all kinds of equations, notes, holy cow. Um, secondary graph. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. So what does log P and skew T really mean? And it's actually, it's not just called the skew T, it's the log P skew T. And the log P is pressure. So really it's just a simple graph. Uh, the y-axis being pressure and the x-axis being temperature, except there's a, going to be a twist uh, or a skew. <laughs> so log P means that the pressure is shown on a logarithmic scale. And uh, that pretty much approximates what goes on in the atmosphere. You know, we have an atmosphere with more <laughs> air and atmosphere above and it compresses down and the more there is above, so it's thicker down here and, and it, it, it gets less and less thick, less and less dense. Uh, and on pretty much a logarithmic scale. So uh, it's log P. S skew T is the temperature, except the way things work, and we're going to read it, it, if you kept it just going straight across like most x-axis, like you see on most x-axis, uh, it would get really hard to read. So what they do is they skew the uh, x-axis at a 45 degree angle. That's all it means, okay? So don't get too upset and too balled up on the skew T. All it means is the x-axis slopes at a 45 degree angle rather than uh, straight across. So here's what it, it might look like. So you got log pressure. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that. I got this. Um, you got log pressure uh, going up this side. And this is in millibars, and a thousand millibars is approximately sea level. Um, and then, you know, the pressure gets less and less as you rise. And as you get to about 700 
uh, millibars, that's approximately 10,000 feet. Uh, you can just think of it as 10,000 feet. And once you get up to 500 uh, millibars, that's about 18,000 feet. And maybe you recall that uh, half the atmosphere is below, half the molecules in the atmosphere are below 18,000 feet and half are above. So 500 is half of 1,000. So that all kind of makes sense, right? So why is, why is it given, why is the y-axis given to us in pressure uh, rather than altitude? Well, it's because the weather balloons that go up, they give us the skew T data, they transmit the skew T data. Uh, they don't really know what the altitude is, but they can measure the pressure. And really, you know, even the altimeter that's in our gliders is really just a pressure gauge. It's, it's just altitude is sort of the inverse, uh, logarithmic inverse of pressure. Uh, so, you know, at 700 millibars, we're at about, our, our altimeters will read about 10,000 feet, and at about 500 millibars, they'll read about 18,000 feet. And um, now the numbers on the skew T go well above uh, five, or well, or well, below or whatever, above 18,000 feet, below 500 millibars. Uh, but we need to know what's going on above us. Is it going to get cloudy up there? Um, you know, what's what's going on above us? So, you know, we want to know that too, even though for most cases, we're not going to go above 18,000 feet. So how do they get this skew T data? Um, you know, it's, uh, they use weather balloons and this, Technology has been around for a long time, uh, but the, being able to analyze the data got a lot better. But weather balloons are launched twice a day from various locations uh, around the world. And the, the, these balloons transmit back pressure, temperature, dew point, wind data uh, as they rise. And there's computer models now that, <coughs> that have allowed weather forecasting to be much more sophisticated and accurate. And, and um, any of the weather Forecasting providers such as SkySight have models that predict the skew T data throughout the day and the days ahead uh, and throughout various locations, even though these weather balloons only rise out of uh, a few specific locations twice a day. So here's a picture of a weather balloon. Um, if uh, you probably, it's pretty rare that anybody will have seen these. Uh, and uh, evidently the device that goes up with it, there, there's just a chip and, uh, in them and I guess they're expendable. So why does thermal lift happen? You know, before we really get into the, the skew T and how to read it, let's think a little bit about lift uh, and thermal lift. Uh, we'll, we'll, we won't get into some of the, the other types of lift, but let's just talk about thermal lift and the skew T and then what, what, how the skew T might help us understand it. Or, or forecast it. Uh, and the answer is convection. And convection is a process where air circulates vertically. Cold air is heavier than warm air, and gravity pulls the cold air down, which forces the warm air up. Uh, uh, it's, so it's not so much that warm air has an anti-gravity uh, <laughs> has an anti-gravity property, it's that cold air is just heavier and then forces down and forces the warmer air up. So uh, that's convection. And with standard atmosphere, that is if you have a uh, atmosphere that's very stable, the higher the altitude, the colder the air and at a standard lapse rate. But if that air happens to be colder than standard, it's pulled down by gravity, uh, displaces the warmer air below, causing it to rise. The way it happens more often is the sun heats the surface of the earth and causes uh, the air below it to become warmer than the, it should be. Um, and then that colder, which is now suddenly colder air above, didn't know it was colder air until it uh, found out it had warmer air below it uh, from the sun heating it up. And then that triggers the process of convection and, and enables the thermals and lift. So we use the skew T to see the rate of change of air temperature with altitude and we want, and those weather balloons give us the data and then the computer programs um, 
calculate the information and, and do, a, uh, do an analysis on it. And we wanna see the temperature drop faster than the standard rate as the altitude increases. That is, we wanna see colder air on top of heavier air. So uh, but lighter, uh, colder, colder air on top of warmer air uh, than it should be. So that warmer air uh, rises and as it rises, it expands and as it expands, it cools. And it does that at, at the adiabatic rate of cooling or lapse rate of cooling. And that adiabatic rate is a faster rate than the standard rate. So as the uh, warmer air at the bottom, relatively warmer, gets up higher, it cools faster until it gets to the temperature that would be standard. Um, and then it stops rising, then it becomes stable. So let's take a look at a skew T. And this is a greatly simplified one. This one uh, uh, shouldn't put you into shock uh, like the, the first one I flashed up there for the scientists. Um, the red line shows the temperature. Well, and as you can see, the, um, the, this temperature where it shows 32, that's skewed. Um, and um, so it, it's showing this temperature here. It starts right about here and you can see it decreases very rapidly close to the ground and then kind of goes up at an adiabatic rate until it reaches sort of a standard rate of cooling. And then it goes up either standard or, or a little bit uh, uh, less than standard. Um, and so there's no lift above here. So this temperature that's decreasing and maybe you can see a little bit of this dotted line that um, uh, uh, SkySight tends to put in, and you can see the difference between that dotted line and that red line uh, is where there'll be buoyancy, where there'll be, be lift. The green line over here shows the dew point. And as the air cools, you can see that the temperature is cooling a lot faster than the dew point. In fact, the dew point really isn't cooling much at all as you, as you go up in temperature. So when they get close to each other and you get temperature and dew point close to each other, then clouds start to form. And this little symbol over here shows that there's indeed cloud where the temperature and dew point are getting close together. Um, these wind barbs over here are also helpful. And uh, they show us which way the wind is blowing as you go up and, and answer. And you can see it's pretty much on this chart, it's pretty much all out of the west. And you can't see the, uh, I don't think you can see the, I got this, oh yeah, you can. Um, you can see up here, it shows the speed, although you really don't need it because you can read the barbs and you can see that that barb is showing uh, about 15 knots. And then this is showing more well, like 10, back to 15, 20, 30 knots, 50 knots up here, 60 knots. So <clears throat> you can see that the, the speed of the wind, the velocity of the wind is increasing as you go up, which is typical. Um, so why do clouds form? Well, clouds form when the temperature and dew point become close or equalize in the, as the air can't hold the water anymore, it condenses into a cloud, and the temperature and dew point converge, clouds form. Now, if you know the difference of between temperature and dew point on the ground, we can estimate approximately the cloud base is using the following formula. So the cloud base will be at the temperature minus the dew point divided by 4.4 times 1,000, if you measure it in Fahrenheit. And use, if you measure it in Celsius, you divide by 2.5 and multiply by 1,000. Uh, th those are approximations, and they only you know, work within a certain range and all that, but it, pretty much the ranges we use, that's, that's a, a fair approximation. So here's a, another example of a 
of a um, skew t. And you can see here that it's showing, this little dotted line is showing there's a pretty good distance between the ground, uh, the ground temperature and where it starts to get in the air. And so that means there'd probably be a lot of lift, but you can see the lift gets less and less strong as you get higher. And then a cloud forms because the temperature and dew point come together. So in this graph, um, you can see that as the temperature goes up or goes down, as the, as the pressure, as the altitude goes up and the temperature and pressure go down, you get to right here and there's this hook right here, this bend. And that's called a temperature inversion because the, the temperature of the air starts to warm as you get higher, which um, that kills a lift. So you could have lift here, but it's gonna stop right there. Now you notice there's a, a shift in the wind here. Uh, and this is a, a boulder phenomena. And so the wind aloft is coming out of the west. It hits that uh, temperature inversion and can't penetrate it. Uh, so it bounces off the, the, the colder air that's down below it and the colder, denser air that's down below it goes down, goes down a ways uh, from, the, from the continental divide and then circulates back. And that's why we get gentle east winds uh, at the Boulder Airport, even though it might be pretty windy out of the west uh, as you get a few thousand feet up. And this shows the shift in the wind at, oh, I don't know, maybe 800 uh, millibars. So that would be less than 10,000 feet. So that, that, that wind shear is, you know, probably at six to 7,000 feet, uh, both the wind shear and the, and the inversion. So you wouldn't be able to climb very high. You might see some birds uh, doing it, but uh, it's not gonna be a good day for soaring. Unless this temperature warms up to here. And that's how trigger temperature, and you, maybe you've heard of trigger temperature, uh, and you see pilots standing around uh, waiting for the trigger uh, to hit. And, and that's what's happened. So if this line here, um, let me see if I can annotate this a little better. Uh, spotlight. So if this line here were to come down at the adiabatic rate and it would have to hit right about there, um, and then this temperature inversion would be gone and uh, thermals could start. Oops, I want that back. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next slide here. So using um, SkySight skew T model, we can see a weak day, and that is weak as in uh, not strong thermal day, uh, and a, a good soaring day. So uh, again, weather forecasting models are built on skew T data. Uh, computer programs and algorithms enable much better forecasting. And even though there's only two soundings a day and only in certain locations, uh, the weather can be forecasted across wide areas and throughout the day using these models. Uh, SkySight obviously has a pretty good one. Um, there's, we're gonna look at a couple examples and discuss and show both the weak thermaline day and the excellent thermaline day. And they were just a few days ago. Um, and I flew in both of them, so I have uh, some firsthand knowledge on, on how good they were or, or not so good. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and go over to the oops. Let's go over to Sky Site and 
So what I've done here is I've put, hopefully you're not seeing all this uh, things that I'm moving around here on my screen. Um, and this is Friday, April 30th. Uh, you can see it over here. Um, I have, that shows the Boulder Airport and I have the SKU T up. The SKU T, now this is gonna be historical, uh, so it won't be uh, forecasted, but anyway, it, 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 they do the same thing on a forecast. So if we look here, we're eight o'clock in the morning. Um, we can see that there's a temperature inversion right about there. And if we wanted to know how, how warm it would have to get, it was gonna to have to be around 68 degrees before we would have a trigger temperature. We can see um, right now that there's not a lot of potential for clouds because the temperature and the dew point are pretty far apart or reasonably far apart. Um, the wind changes direction as we get up uh, here to maybe 16,000 feet. But you know, here's another temperature inversion. So we got a temperature inversion. Of course, it's eight o'clock in the morning. So let's um, go ahead and start running it through the day. Okay. So now we're at 8:30. Oops. Um, looks like I'm going to have to redo this. Sorry, folks. That's okay. We can. So let's start it at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll use the uh, SKU T right there is Boulder Airport. Okay, so at 10 o'clock in the morning, now things are starting. You can see this line has started to do a little bit better here. So now this is starting to line up. We still got a temperature inversion here uh, at 8,000 feet. So the soaring hasn't really started yet. But it has warmed up a little bit above, so it's getting to be, you know, 68 degrees or so on the ground. Let's see what happens as the day wears on. So this uh, will go now 1030. We're seeing this line straighten out a little bit more. 11 o'clock, we still have a temperature inversion right there. Uh, all right. Let's... Uh, Okay, so now let's go back to about noon on this day. Now oh, there's noon 30. Um, yeah, I may not have a strong enough connection to do both uh, these. So uh, we'll just do it again. So now we can see we do have a thermaling day. Okay, it's, we've got enough. It's only gonna go to about 12,500, uh, which uh, some pilots did get close to 12,000 that day, but said they couldn't climb any higher. Um, I wasn't even able to get that high. Uh, it, was, it was kind of weak that day. So let's, let's see what happens later in the day. Okay, so there's, um, well, we did have 530. Um, so now we've got a temperature inversion again here, um, but probably still some lift. Maybe you could get up again to maybe to 12, 13,000. We get to six o'clock in the evening. Um, this worked better when I didn't have the uh, sun, but we go to, and there's still some lift that's being shown, but 
Now clouds are starting to form up here and it just wasn't that great a day. Uh, I think once we get to uh, seven o'clock, it'll show really shut down. Yeah, so there's just nothing. So let's go on to the next day, which was a much better day, Saturday. Um, and so we'll go to Saturday, we'll do a point forecast here. And we can see there's already clouds starting to form. We've got uh, high clouds. And so at 300, that's like 30,000, 31,000 feet. Uh, so these are real high cirrus clouds. That did not help the day any, um, but we know it's there and it was still turned out to be a good soaring day. If we look here, we would need to get, it's showing about 77 degrees would be the, the, the trigger temperature. So if we jump forward to 11 o'clock, um, we can see now that the temperature is getting to be close to 77, things are starting to work. We're starting to get some uh, thermal action going on. And you don't get an inversion until you get to pretty close to 18,000. So let's jump forward to maybe one o'clock. And you can see over here on the left side that it's showing pretty good lift. Uh, the height of the lift is higher. And, but this is, this data, this, you know, the coloring data is coming from the skew T. So now we're showing pretty good lift. See how this line is sloping down. In other words, as you get higher, it's getting colder faster than the standard rate. Uh, the standard rate is shown here. So, and you see the difference. You can see the dotted lines there on the right of the, uh, of the red temperature line. That would be the standard rate. Uh, so it's showing that gap. That means, oh, good, there's, there's lift there. Clouds forming at 10,000 feet, and then there's also high cirrus. So where the temperature dew point come together, you get a cloud, you go further up um, height and height, um, way up high, which is you know, 35,000 feet, you get, start getting clouds again, and that shut things down. Now, later in the day, but it still stayed pretty good. So if we jump to say three o'clock, sorry, we're gonna have to do this again. So if we jump back three o'clock, again, we're seeing it pretty strong here. Um, the winds increase. As we get up above 18,000 feet, the winds get stronger, but they stayed, uh, you know, reasonable. The, you know, down here in the lower lower part of the atmosphere, um, we've got a nice slope here, and we did have, you know, very good thermals. Um, uh, the lift was pretty good at three o'clock in the afternoon uh, when I was coming back. I didn't have any trouble staying staying high. Uh, so if you go to five o'clock. And uh, and it's going to make me do it again, but that's okay. We can get it. Now, remember those high clouds we were talking about? Uh, after a while, they did kind of. When we get to five o'clock, you can see how thick that cloud is by how much how close these are, and then it even shows it over here. Now things are starting, now that line, see where the dotted line, there's hardly any room between the dotted line and, and this. So things are getting shut down. And if we went to seven o'clock, um, we all landed and put our gliders away. Uh, we're all, we're, we're on the ground by then and put our gliders away. Uh, we'll look at the skew T again. And see the inversion down here? So there's nothing going on now because you just can't get above the ground. Look how big the cloud got. See how the temperature and dew point 
and the whole the whole sky clouded over, uh, and there's just no more left. So, at any rate, uh, that's kind of how to read a skew T to watch it go through the day to know uh, where the trigger temperature is to know if you're going to have clouds, high clouds, or or, or cumulus clouds that, that are forming just because of the lift, um, and uh, what the winds are going to do, and all that's in the skew T. So there's lots of great stuff in the skew T for the glider pilot. And so, uh, any rate, uh, hopefully this will help you uh, better uh, understand uh, the skew T and uh, uh, wish you well and and uh, and happy soaring. So, uh, see if I can figure out how to. Bye, everyone.